this gets started officially, you are in the Objective-C class, and this is the weekend, and we're going to go for eight hours today, eight hours tomorrow, and we're going to build project after project. So if you have a Mac computer with you, you're in good shape. You won't be bored. If not, you'll have to entertain yourself some other way. Uh, but anyway, long story short, we will be starting with this list here. This list is going to be in the course materials in the source code examples. The reason why I'm pointing this out is because you're probably going to want to download these examples because then you can cut and paste and um, you can fill in uh, missing pieces of information as we go through. And you can follow along and if you're not, uh, if you don't have a MacBook with you and you're not doing anything, you could do it at home perhaps if you ever get yourself a MacBook. You're going to need a MacBook in order to do the assignments for the course so or you have to borrow somebody's system to do the assignments for the course. So eventually you might want to try catching up. So see what you missed in the class and then you can catch up later on. Um, if you're going to catch up later on, you're going to go into the uh, course materials and now we're going into the source code examples subfolder and in the source code examples right now I think we're going to do the clock first actually I started through last time and now I'm going to review a little bit as we go through which is why I want to pick sort of an easier tutorial last time we did the palindrome thing the text reverse you put a string in and it reverses goes to another string um, I don't remember what else we did though um, I know we did a couple of other things but uh, so we might have a little bit of an overlap in the beginning here. Um, I don't know. Someone said we did the clock, but I don't think we did the clock, so I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but let's see. We could have done it in the iOS class, actually. So There's two classes, so maybe you took the other one? I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, entertain me with the clock. So the digital, digital clock tutorial is the one we're going to do right now, actually. And uh, if you can't get it working, the digital clock finished solution will help you with that. All right, so this is to get your feet wet to uh, essentially get back into the swing of iOS and, uh, and, and uh, excuse me, uh, Objective-C programming. I like this tutorial because it works with data objects. We're going to make an instance of a data object. It's going to be an NS timer. So go ahead and open up Xcode. And uh, I upgraded... Uh, last time, so I have the newer interface actually. Um, I still haven't gotten the one that works with, um, uh, what is it now? Uh, Mavericks. Yeah, no, I'm still on Mountain Lion. So. But I think Xcode probably looks the same. I know there's a newer version for Mavericks. But uh, anyway, go ahead and create a new Xcode project. If you create a new Xcode project, create the single view application. So go ahead and select single view application. That's the project type. And this one I call digital digital clock. Uh, sorry, go digital clock or D clock or clock if you want to call it clock. And um, I'm going to make mine for the iPhone, but you can make it for any device that you want. And I go ahead and click on next. And I'm going to save mine on the desktop so that way I could just throw it away when I'm all done. And then I have my blanket project that was created. So in my blanket project, <coughs> I'm going to spend a few minutes just and kind of repeat myself from last time to sort of um, orient you back into the, no, orient myself actually, because I've been doing Android all this time. Uh, so orient myself back into iOS. Uh, we have our main storyboard. Our main storyboard is going to have the interface here. And the interface I have is going to be the view. And the view is going to be for my iPhone because I selected an iPhone project. And then I've got my view controller, <coughs> which is going to be used to, to navigate or to control the view. And then I've got my app delegate. So today we're going to be using all three parts, actually, in most of the tutorials that we look at. So, uh, so let's see. <coughs> if I go back to the clock here, uh, as soon as I find the clock here, I've got like, here it is. Uh, I've got two, two more tutorials opened up there. That's the next one's in the queue. Uh, what we're going to do here then is open up viewcontroller.h and add an instance of nstimer. And uh, the nstimer that we're going to add, we're going to call it my ticker. So if you remember, and this is the reason why we're doing this, so we can kind of refresh our memories on this. The viewcontroller.h is the interface file. Viewcontroller.m is the implementation file. We put data in the interface by using opening and closing brackets like that. And just the data goes in there. All of the methods and things go outside of that. So it's not like C++ 
where everything is going inside of the opening and closing brackets. Only the data members go there. And um, so what I'm also going to do today is kind of tell you things that you need to know for the final. So, and I was joking around earlier, I probably should require a MacBook for the final, seriously. Um, but uh, you'll definitely be asked questions, so you want to have some practice. You want to be able to go through these tutorials, because I'm going to ask you questions not only about the tutorials that we've gone through, but it's basically to see if you followed along, if you did the things that we did in class, if you were here, like really present here, not just here physically. Uh, so it's not really going to be a technical, it's going to be more along the lines of, um, you know, where does the data go? It goes in between the opening and closing brackets. <laughs> it doesn't go, it doesn't go outside of that. Methods and the data don't go all inside the same. So, <clears throat> so here I'm going to put in an instance of a method that I'm going to create. It's going to be called an NS timer. So if I look at the uh, tutorial, it says a data type is going to be the NS timer. And the NS timer is uh, going to be called my my ticker. So if I come in here and uh, create this instance of this object, I can say NS, and then I see that it's actually kind of a built-in object. Here it is, NS timer. And now uh, we use the asterisk because all objects in Objective C are pointers. So my ticker is going to be the name of my object, and we put a semicolon at the end. So I'm kind of sort of reviewing. Objective-C programming here at the same time. Um, so this is the data type, like NS string, NS integer, NS timer is a data type. It's just going to represent time. It's a time, like a date, time variable. And uh, my ticker is going to be the name of it. Uh, so we're going to need to put something on the GUI to uh, show the NS timer. So if I click on the storyboard out here, and uh, if you... Re remember the interface, we have those three components. So if we click on the middle one here that looks like the tuxedo icon here, we've got the center panel with my controller, uh, my view controller. So view controller dot M. I'm going to switch it over to view controller dot H, which is the controller we were just on a few minutes ago actually. And if we remember we have the three things on the side here, we can click back and forth to switch between the different visible components on the screen. So in this particular case, I have uh, the view controller, or the view, I should say, and I have the view controller on the right-hand side. So let's take a look here. Um, we're going to add a label to the view controller, XIB file, uh, which is the interface builder file, and label it clock display. So go ahead and drag over, refresh your memory here. Um, if you click on the right side, the right little piece, you get the properties for the view. Down on the bottom is the library on the bottom of this screen. I'm just, actually here it is here, but you can type in label and you'll get to a label. Here's a label. I'm going to drag the label, stick it on the canvas. Now I have a label out here. And uh, I'm going to make my label a little bit bigger. I'm going to make my label like 25 or something. I don't know. Let's play around with it for a few minutes here. <coughs> And so there's my label. I think I'll change my background color. I like the backgrounds to be green. So now I got my green background with my label. And uh, go ahead and refamiliarize yourself. And uh, you can actually change a few other things if you'd like. Whatever you'd like to change, go ahead and change it. And um, all right. So once you're happy with the once you're happy with the screen here. Uh, we have our label. Now we're going to have to connect our label to our view controller. So to refresh your memory, what we're going to do is control drag or drag to the view controller.h file. And uh, we're going to make a property out of it. So remember, property and synthesize from last, uh, well, it was about a month ago, the last time we were here. And we're going to call this one a clock display. And so go into um, Xcode again, take your label. And hold down the control button, and you see that you'll see that you can put it anywhere you want in here. So I'm actually going to put it underneath here. It doesn't necessarily need to. It doesn't go inside of the opening and the closing. This is only for data that you're defining. So the properties can go above it or below it. You can put it anywhere you want. It doesn't go inside. Just remember that part. And uh, this is going to be. Uh, what are we going to call the sucker? We're going to call the sucker clock display. Uh, so let me go back here 
and call it clock display. And I'm going to leave it on UI label. That's the data type. It's a UI label. And I'm going to leave it on weak. So let me explain strong and weak to you, actually, because uh, I don't know if I did that last time. Um, so weak means it's going to be garbage collected. It's not going to hang around for the life of the program. Strong means it's retained. It's not going to be garbage collected. So what I mean by garbage collection is that we have a semi-automatic system where if it's marked as weak and we need some memory, the system needs to free up some memory, it'll pull that out if it's not being used because it's not doesn't necessarily need to be retained forever. So, um, so now I have my property and remember if I put my mouse over the property I can see it over here. So we're good this far. What we're trying to do is review, kind of get back in the swing of iOS. Some people haven't looked at it for about another month or so. so. All right. Uh, so now let's switch over the view controller to the .m file. And because we did a property, we need to do a synthesize. And we're going to synthesize the clock display. So I'm going to stick it right underneath where it says implementation. And I'm going to go at synthesize. And then I'm going to go clock display. And when I do that, I've created the setters and the getters, essentially. So property and synthesize creates the setters and the getters. Do we remember what this is for up here, this interface, at interface, and then at end? This gives us our ability to create private data instead of public data. It means private data that's not a member of the class. It's a member of only the implementation. So if we're going to use data in here, we could put it in here. It hides it from the public interface. So that's what I meant by private and public. By default, all, all of our data is private, actually. And um, when we put it here, it's really private because it's not a member of the class. So did you want to take attendance? OK, let me pause the video here. Hold on. OK, let's start back up. <laughs> so we were uh, dragging and dropping the label. So we have a synthesized now the clock display. So on the dot .h file, just to refresh your memory, we create a property. And you can't get on attendance now, by the way. He's not going to let you. <laughs> anyway, um, so we've got the clock display as a property. And then on the .m file, we have the synthesize. These are questions I'm going to ask you on the final exam, by the way. So this is why I'm repeating all this stuff. Um, I actually put together the final already, uh, so I know exactly what's going to be on it. Uh, so part of this weekend is telling you what's going to be on it, actually. So because uh, I'm not going to review it next weekend. You're just going to show up and take it. So this is the weekend I'm going to tell you what to study. So you want to know, which is why if you miss it, then you're going to miss out on what to know. So anyway, so property synthesizer are definitely on the final. You want to be able to, to know what that means. You're creating the setters and the getters. So you're able to make private data public through the synthesize. Property creates like a variable, and the synthesize makes it public, creates the public interface to it. All right, so we have the clock display, and uh, what to, uh, let's go back to the tutorial here. So we also created the local variable, my ticker. So my ticker variable is going to be responsible for updating the clock label. And so we're going to have adding a couple more methods here. So the reason why I like this tutorial is because it adds extra stuff to it that's not part of the dragging and the dropping. So let's create two new methods. And the two new methods we're going to create are we're going to put in the viewcontroller.h file. And we're going to, it's going to get added between the add interface and the add end. So I'm actually just going to cut and paste this and stick it in, or copy and paste it. So I'm copying the two methods, run timer and show activity. You put the uh, prototypes for the methods inside of the viewcontroller.h file, which is where we're at now. I'm actually just going to stick them at the top here. So I've pasted in the two methods, and the two methods are run timer and then show activity. And uh, I'm wondering why I've got a. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm in the M file. Okay, so that's why. So I'm going to take this out. I thought I was in the .h file. Uh, switch over to the .m file. And so if that happened to you, you are probably in the wrong file. You can actually stick them anywhere you want. I'm going to stick them up here just to demonstrate a point to you that you don't have to put them underneath the properties. You can stick them above the properties. So, you know, another interesting thing as I discovered on the new 
new version of Xcode when you go ahead and create a default project and you click on the tuxedo, it brings up the .m for you. It used to bring up the .h automatically, which is kind of um, kind of backwards. It should bring up the .h first. So anyway, so the run timer and the these are called the method prototypes. <laughs> they're unimplemented. Do we remember what the minus means? The minus means that they're instance variables, not class. But excuse me, instance methods, not class methods. If we had a plus, there's only two choices, plus and minus. If you put a plus in there, then you have a class. It's class level. A minus gives you instance, so it's an instance level. All right, so we have a run timer and uh, show activity. So now I can flip over to the .m file and add the implementation. So the .h is the interface, the .m is the implementation. We're going to implement those two methods to add in the functionality that we're going to use. So if we go back to the um, go back to the tutorial, we'll see well, what we're going to put in here. So we're going to add the functionality to implement and the run timer. So the run timer is going to start and uh, it's going to trigger the show activity method. And so it's going to run every 0.5 seconds. We can change the seconds around with this variable here if we wanted to. And uh, my ticker is going to be equal to, and then you're going to look at this and go, well, what is this here? This is a method call. One really big method call. And the method call here is an NS timer, and then it's going to be a scheduled timer with interval, which is passing a parameter. So if I asked you, what is scheduled timer with in time interval? It's a parameter. What is this? This is a method call. What method are we running? We're running the method uh, on NS timer. This is the method that we're running, and it's going to be a scheduled timer with timer interval, and it's going to be 0 0.5 is, and then the target is going to be self. So the self, which means on itself, and the selector is going to be at the selector show timer, which is going to be the method that we're going to run. User information nil repeats yes, which means it goes every five minutes. It just keeps repeating over and over. So what I'm going to do then is copy and paste this and stick it over into the .m file. So I'm going to open up, uh, let's see, and uh, this little yellow thing is going to tell me that I have a warning, and the warning is that I don't have these methods implemented. So I'm going to go ahead and implement one of them here. And uh, the method now is implemented. So it says, uh, you know, a little word wrap here on my comments. I fixed that up there. It looks like I'm having some good luck cutting and pasting today. Uh, and that doesn't always cut and paste correctly. So I cut and pasted and I put the run timer method implementation inside of the .m file on viewcontroller.m. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the other one in there too. The other one is going to be the show activity method. So let me just copy and paste and put that one in there too. I'll uh, put it underneath here, actually. So now the show activity method has an NS date formatter. And uh, the formatter is going to do an NS date formatter alloc and an init. So remembering from last time, and I'm still sort of reviewing right now, um, we have to alloc, we have to in initialize. If we do this, we're running the default object initializer. And if we run like we did over here, we're initializing it with data that's being sent to us that's kind of a different concept. It's not an initialization, it's not an alloc. It's running a method on an object, and the object that we're running the method on is this object, my ticker. My ticker was defined in viewcontroller.h. So this is my ticker. So if you called my ticker something else, then you need to change the name over here, you're going to get an error message. So on this object, we're running a method. So and so this here, we're creating a new instance of the object. The new instance of the object that we're creating is called formatter. Formatter is a date formatter. So we're alloc and initializing it. And then we're going to create another one called the date. So NS date date is going to be NS date. Interesting, date and time work together just like Unix actually, or Linux Unix. Date and time are part of the same object component. So this will produce a timer that looks like this here. 12, 15, comma, you know, with the, with the hours, minutes, and seconds, along with the AM and the PM. So the formatter set timer style will change the style of it if you want the hours and the minutes, but no seconds, or if you don't want the AM and the PM, 
you know, whatever it is that you're looking for. All right. And then now we have a, a method call for clock display, clock display set text. So if you didn't call over here on your .h file, this is clock display. If you didn't call your label clock display, you're going to have an error message as well. Um, and the error message is going to tell you that clock display doesn't exist. Because this is the label that we created, we're going to set the text to the formatted text that we created from the date object. So it's a string from date with the date and sent to the formatter. And this is the formatter object, the date formatter. So it's kind of a long way of doing it, but what we've done is created a date object, formatted it, gave it a time, and our, said basically to put it in the time format, and now we're going to add the text to a label. So we're going to show it to the screen. All right, so now we can run the method. It only has one line of code, splits into multiple lines. If you read through the tutorial here, we've got the explanation for what those methods actually do. All the work is done in the show activity method. Um, so every 0.5 seconds, the date is actually updated for us. So the show activity method formats the clock display. And uh, so it looks like this in this format here. And it sets the current time. And then we call the run timer after, a few, after the view loads. So when uh, we generate the code for the viewcontroller.m file, uh, m file, we include the view did load or view did load method. The view did load method loads automatically with the life cycle of the object. So uh, last time I talked about the life cycle of the object, and we looked at view did load, view did unload, view did pause, all of the different things associated with the life cycle of when that object actually gets loaded and when the object gets unloaded. So in this particular case, we have this method given for us automatically. So it's right here, actually. But that doesn't do anything. And all it does is call super view did load. So if we reload it right now, nothing's going to happen. We put the label on there. And we put the two methods on there to calculate and show the, the time. But we have to stick it on the label somehow. And we have to start the timer. So that's what we're going to use the view did load for. So on the view did load, we're going to go self run timer. So self is like uh, this in Java, actually. It's, uh, self is a C++ self as well. It's also an objective C to say that this object, and again, we're running a method here from review from last time. And the method we're running is run timer. So we don't use the dot notation in objective C. We use the opening and the closing brackets. So go ahead and add this line of code to the view did load anywhere you want, actually. So if I put it at the top, actually I like to put it underneath the super, super view did load. So if I stick it underneath here, then I've got the run timer, and the run timer is going to run for me here. And so if I come back and look at this, and now I've got the view did load to go ahead and load it. So now if we compile it and run it, we should see that the clock works. So let's go take a look at it actually, and make sure that we've got a working program at least. So when we load this up, the run timer is going to execute. The run timer is up here. It's going to make ticker, my ticker, which is the, the object itself, into a timer object. Well, it is a timer object. It's going to add the date to it. And then it's going to show the activity. So every 0.5 seconds, half a second or so, I don't know how many 0.5 seconds is. But anyway, it's going to go ahead and update the label for us. So if we run it, let's take a look here and see what we have. I'm running it. Uh, so let me see, my emulator should show up momentarily. Oh, it's an iPad. No, it's an iPhone. Okay, good. And now we have the timer working. So we're going to turn this into a stopwatch by adding a couple buttons now. Uh, so we can stop the timer, start the timer by playing around with the object. So you should right now have a working timer. Um, a lot of people, you know, go, oh, that's kind of simple. What am I going to do with this for? The funny thing is, is you can create a scheduling program. You know, actually, it's a really nice little app that you could create to, you know, maybe you have a couple of text boxes and you put in some times and you put in some activities, like reminders, like, hey, tell me when you know, it's time to go to lunch or something, or tell me when it's time to come back from lunch. You can create a nice little timer program that just automatically notifies you of certain things. You know, so it's, it does come in handy for, you know, playing around. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. 
And uh, we're going to put a couple buttons on here, and the buttons are going to be a start and a stop button to demonstrate how to do that. Um, so I'm clicking on the right hand side to bring up the properties, and I'm going to click now again on the on the view so that I have the the properties on the right hand side associated with it. I'm going to get rid of label down here. I'm going to put button in. I have the iOS 7 so my buttons are going to be flat and my view is going to be flat looking. So slightly different view. So go ahead and drag a couple buttons and stick them on the canvas. And uh, I'm going to call this one start and I'm going to call this one stop. So now I have a start and a stop button, and I'm actually you know, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger here. It's just I like big stuff, so so you can see it from a mile away. Here we go. Start. I'm make this one big too. Stop. All right. So now I got my label. And if I wanted to make this nice, I could put here to the, the timer because that's just going to be replaced anyway. And then here I can actually center it maybe. Um, a lot of people would put like the timer on there only because for troubleshooting purposes when you're looking at it, you know, what is that thing? And then you can kind of center it, you know, where, where it's going to show up. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, actually. All right, so now I have my interface looking the way I want it. I'm going to need to add the controls for the two buttons. So I'm going to get rid of the side panel over here by pressing the little button over here to uh, make my screen, give me a little bit more real estate going on here. And uh, if your center panel is not here, then click on the click on the tuxedo icon. So the tuxedo icon will bring up the the right hand side panel. Switch over to the viewcontroller.h file, and then we're going to control drag the two buttons and stick it down here as well. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Make this a little bit. I'm just going to adjust my screen a little bit here. And uh, I'm going to right mouse click on the button. So select the button, right mouse click on it, and then I'm going to take one of the actions. So remember before we had properties and synthesize that were associated with the labels and properties. Now I'm going to take a look at an action, an IB action. Um, so IB stands for interface builder. So an action that's going to be performed on the interface such as a button click or a button touch. So I'm going to take the touchdown event. You can take any event that you want actually. And uh, I'm going to drag it over here. So I clicked on the little X, the little bubble, and I dragged it over. And I'm going to call this one. This is the start uh, start button. So I'm going to call it start button. And you notice underneath it where it says type, it says ID. So we're going to look at another one, another example next. Actually, that's going to be called introspect. That's just going to take all components and do something to all of them. So if I were going to do that, then I leave it on ID because ID ID is a generic data type. Um, so ID basically is like a generic pointer that says it's a button. It actually doesn't say it's a button, it says it's an object. So in the next tutorial we're going to look at, we're going to have that functionality in there. But for right now I'm going to switch it over to button because next, you know, when I look at this further down the road and I take a look at the code, I might notice that, um, were you looking for him? <laughs> I might know, you yeah, guys always sit together, that's what I said. Um, I might notice that, you know, I might not remember what it is but if it says UI button on it, then I'll remember. If it says ID, I might not remember it's a button or something. So Anyway, so go ahead and change it to button or leave it on ID. It's your choice. And go ahead and press connect. So now I have a method uh, prototype in my .h file, my interface file called start button. And do the same thing now with the stop button. So go ahead and drag a control drag, excuse me, right mouse click. And then... Uh, drag over. You used to have to press the control button, but you don't have to do that anymore. And uh, drag over the touchdown event. Now I'll call this one stop button. Uh, so let's see. Stop button. And then change the type to a UI button. There we go. And press connect. You should be able to do this. This is review from the last weekend, actually. You should be able to do this already. If this is difficult for you, it means you need to get yourself a MacBook. <laughs> you need to run through some of this stuff um, so that you're familiar with how to drag and drop with components to make properties out of them and then also how to take buttons and drag them over to make actions, to program the actions for them.
So go ahead now and switch over to the .m file. If we switch over to the .m file, we have over here the implementation. And you see that we already have the we already have the kind of the method prototypes that are created for the implementation over here. Which is kind of interesting. In the old days, you used to be able to property something and then get an automatic synthesize over in the .m. Now they don't do that anymore, but they still create because the, actually the synthesize is actually optional. You don't necessarily have to synthesize it. But if you don't synthesize it, you can't use it, which is kind of a I mean, ironic thing. So why don't they automatically synthesize that anymore? Who knows? But they still include the method um, creation over in the .ms because most people are going to implement the functionality. So If we implement the functionality, what we're going to do is start and stop the timer. So over here we have this method that says run timer. And we're calling the run timer method on the view did load. So on the view did load method, we're starting this up automatically when we load Xcode. So if I take a look at the tutorial here, I've kind of skipped through many of the steps here. So let me just go down to the bottom here. We could do a counter and check the value of the counter, which is what we're going to do here. Because what we want to know is like, now, oh, this is actually going to give us the time that elapsed. So we're going to put another label in there. So we're going to do a stopwatch. So we have the start time and the end time. And so we'll be able to say how many seconds. And then we'll update the counter with start and then one, two, three, four, stop or something. So, uh, which is a little bit different than I remember from this tutorial. So let me go ahead and finish up the interface by adding this other component to it. So we'll add a label and wire the property to, to a counter timer. So go ahead and drag and drop a label. There was one more piece. I was actually going to just start and stop the timer. But it's probably, yeah, let's add all the functionality. So we'll go over here and we'll type in label. And drag a label over here. And uh, for, you know, troubleshooting purposes, I'm going to call this one here the counter. And then I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger too. So let's make this one about, uh, I'm going to make it 30. And then I'll center the text in the box here. All right. So this is going to give us our elapsed time between the pressing of the stop and the pressing of the stop, but starting the stop button. So, uh, so let's see, now that we have this piece in here, let's drag and make a property out of it. So let me switch back over to the .h file. Oops, let's move this over this way. And uh, let's see what we've got down here. Um, we have a property here. I'm going to stick mine underneath. I like to organize things together. That way I can find them in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and make a property out of this by control dragging it over here. And this property that I'm going to create is going to be called counter timer. So go ahead and call that counter timer. Counter time, I'm sorry. Counter time. If I change the name, I just change the name over in the .m file when I go ahead and update that label. Um, so go ahead and call it that and press connect. So now I have my counter time from between the stop and the stop button. So I'm going to switch back over to the .m file. And uh, take a look to see what I need to do here. Oh, we have to add the integer counter. So we'll add another piece of data. Uh, so let's go back to the .h file. Excuse me. And underneath where it says uh, NS timer, just go in here, integer counter. So we're going to create a temporary integer variable to keep track of the time between the start and the stop button when we press that. So let me just make sure I haven't missed anything else in here. Uh, so switch to the viewcontroller.m, add the counter timer to the existing synthesize line. So let's go ahead and synthesize now the counter timer. So go ahead and click on the viewcontroller.m file. And on the synthesize line, put a comma and then put in counter timer, counter time. And um, actually, hold on one second. Let me pause this video for a second. Okay, so let's resume. <coughs> now that I'm in much better nose shape, so I don't feel like I'm going to start dripping all over the place here. So, All right, so um, we added a timer, and we added a counter. So let me just uh, 
Let me just make sure I have my pieces in order here. So I added the integer counter, integer value to keep track of how much time elapsed between hitting the start button and the stop button. So now I can use this for our breaks later. So I can figure out how long we're supposed to take break for. All right, so if I go to M, M file, I added to my synthesized line, and just to refresh your memory from last time, you can concatenate them together like this by putting a comma in between them. So you can string them all together. Or you could put in separate synthesized lines. I don't know anyone who really does prefer the separate lines for that. It's kind of like separating things out makes more work. Uh, so go ahead and add the counter timer to the synthesize. And now we're going to add the following code to implement those methods. So the methods that we're going to do is, is for the stop and the start button. It's the same as the timer. We're going to create and use a timer here and set the new instance of the timer to a start time interval. And so it's going to be intervals of seconds. So it'll instead of half of a second updates, we'll do one, two, three, four. So it should basically provide us with a second counter, or a counter by seconds, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the code in for the start button. And if I do that, I go down to the bottom, and I see the start button, and I paste the code in here. And if I make this one go out this way a little bit more, I can see where my now this isn't gonna this isn't gonna isn't gonna uh, paste exactly the way I want it, but we'll see. Uh, got some extra characters in here, and I've got a little kind of a yellow thing. I see what this is: undeclared show timer activity. Uh, let's see. So the show timer activity is I called the activity show activity so I can get rid of this timer in here and it was called the show activity now I have the activity spelt correctly so in my tutorial I was a little uh, or the show timer activity is the one that's being run the show timer activity is going to be showing uh, going to be running this method here my method name was called something else uh, when I created it I don't know why Oh, maybe there's another one we didn't. Oh, yeah, you know what? Excellent point. The show activity updates per the regular timer. We're going to have a different one. We put that back in there, show timer activity. We have to implement that method. The show timer activity is going to update the counter, not update the other one. So we have two labels on there. Show activity updates the main label. Show timer activity is going to update the timer counter. So... Long story short, it's really pretty much doing a very similar activity, but we're going to make two separate methods out of it. Um, so on the stop, it's going to be uh, an invalidate. An invalidate is a method call to tell the object to stop, essentially. Uh, there's no start and stop on this, although we do have a start and stop on some of the other methods uh, that will run on objects. But in this particular case, my ticker dot, excuse me, my ticker invalidate will stop the ticker and validate it. And then my ticker equals nil, just basically it's a cleanup mechanism to set the object to nil because the object isn't going to be pointing, it's not going to be running to an active timer anymore. So we're going to invalidate it. So go ahead and add these two lines of code to the stop button. And uh, <coughs> here we go. So we have it added to the stop button. And uh, now we're going to need to add that show timer activity method. So in the instructions here, if we add the show timer activity, this is doing nothing more than updating our, our text on the counter timer, that label that we stuck out there and made a property out of. And uh, it's going to be equal to, well, we're going to create the seconds out of that. So integer counter plus minus one, basically increment the counter by one. And then take and create hours. Hours is going to be counter divided by 3,600. Uh, 3, minutes is the counter divided by 60 minus counters times 60. And then seconds are going to be the counter minus hours. You know, basically we're, we're creating the hours, minutes, and the seconds. And then we're going to format the hours, minutes, and the seconds using a formatted string. And the formatted string we're going to use is a string with format of the three components separated with a colon in between. So we're actually going to create our own looking time-looking um, display of our hours, minutes, and our seconds. So go ahead and put this in the code as well. 
And I'm going to stick it right underneath. It doesn't really matter what order you stick it in. Um, and uh, let's take a look here. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to fix the formatting here, and then I'm going to fix that one as well. I, I um, capitalized the C encounter timer when I created it. So. Before what? Timer activity? No, I think it's pretty right. It's, it's okay. Uh, what what are we saying? Show timer activity. Show timer activity. Oh 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 yes yes that is an interesting typo. And did that actually come out of here, or was that inserted in? Oh, that's interesting. Huh. That was a typo. <laughs> but no syntax error. Yeah, but no syntax error. That's an, interesting, um, that's an interesting error. I wonder if it works with the semicolon. Let's take a look here, actually. Now I'm kind of curious. That's a syntax error, but there's no syntax error. That's interesting. I wonder if it works. Let me see. Right. Maybe it just ignores the semicolon. Should not have a semicolon there. Let's see if it works. So we have the time incremented here. So if I start, oh, start works. It does work with the semicolon in there. That is the most bizarre thing. Stop. So start and stop does work. Six, seven, eight. That's really weird. <laughs> I wonder why it ignores this. I wonder why. It's kind of odd. Huh. Maybe. Do you check in the Excuse me? Do you want to check in, check in the interface? Why? The meta name? It's not going to be in there. We don't need it in the interface. It's If we don't put it in the interface, it's not public, which is great, because why does this need to be public? It's being called by one of the private methods. Excuse me, but by one of the public methods. It's not being called by the public. If we wanted to call it by a public call, like we wanted to have a button that called it or something, directly, then we need to put the interface inside of the .h file and then the implementation in the .h. If we just stick it in the implementation, very similar to this part up here, if we just stick it in the implementation, it's private. We can't call it from the public interface, which is actually kind of interesting. So, oops, I forgot to turn this on. So, Not that anyone is listening to me in the back, but <laughs> they've all left. <laughs> so. It's actually kind of ironic. All right, so we have a working clock. Uh, yours should be working with or without that little semicolon. The, the thing that I thought was interesting was the fact that we had a typo in here. We had the semicolon there, which should not be here, but it was still working. And there was no syntax error being called. It was probably just ignored is what I'm thinking. But it is actually kind of interesting that that works with or without that semicolon. The semicolon doesn't belong there, by the way. So now our starter and our stopper timer works. Yep. Well, oh, no, the stop's not working. Well, it's because I hit the start a couple of times, <laughs> perhaps. So here, we'll stop. We'll stop the uh, stop the simulator. I'll start fresh. I uh, hit the start a couple of times, so most likely that was probably the problem. So if I start it, I got two, three, stop, stops on three, just fine. So there's your stopwatch. So we'll use that for the breaks later, <laughs> just in case. Yeah, not really. Doesn't really matter. Uh, questions on the digital clock exercise? Everyone, get that to work. That was pretty much a repeat or a review of what we did last time. So the last weekend, that was kind of a, kind of a, you know, pretty representative of what we covered last time. So I have this other tutorial. It's called Introspect, and Introspect is kind of interesting because I really want to take a look at this ID concept and the concept of objects and seeing what the objects are, and then using those objects to sort of, um, you know, figure out uh, what what are they? Should we hide them? Should we show them? So designing with introspection is the next tutorial that we're going to run through. And uh, 
this is going to be uh, looking at the concept of dynamic binding. I'm actually going to break this video out, so I'm going to stop this video actually right now, and then we'll pick it up.